Hello everybody, how you doing? Uh, welcome. My name is Owen Adams and this is my channel about video games and stuff. And uh, I've actually been away on a programming course for a little while, so I haven't been putting a lot of content up. But uh, this is hopefully the beginning of a new series that will uh, be kind of interesting. And it's a little different, it's not quite a gameplay video, not quite a tutorial, because I'm the one doing the learning here. But, uh, well, I'll explain and hopefully it'll be interesting to some people. So what you're seeing here is the menu from a Commodore 64, but of course not a real Commodore 64 because if I hit this button, I can actually access the menu here, and you'll see this is the C64. Uh, if you ha uh, if you've been following this channel for any amount of time, you will know that I love a mini console, uh, the NES Mini, the SNES Mini. Uh, I enjoy. I've, I think I own almost every. I don't have the Neo Geo. Uh, but I'd actually held off buying the Commodore 64 Mini because, uh, and this will maybe shock and appall the old Commodore fans, I never owned a Commodore 64, and I never really liked them very much. When I played Commodore 64 games, I found them a bit uh, uh, ugly to look at, and they come from an era of like bugs and everything's very precise and stuff. But what appealed to me about this mini console it does have a, a beautiful selection of games and some great uh, Commodore chip tunes there. Uh, but that's actually not why I was uh, interested in this mini console. It was, as you've seen, this thing here called Classic Mode, where if you plug in a keyboard, you can actually access the Commodore 64 operating system and, and type in it. Hello! Which produces a syntax error. Now the reason I was interested in this is this goes to kind of a bit of nostalgia for me. When I was a kid, my dad was a computer programmer and he had a BBC Micro and he learned BBC Basic. And he were, used to say that when he got into computers, pretty late in life, I think his first computer was a ZX81, you would fire up a computer and you could just type Basic like this. So if I write print Hello. Uh, the computer says hello, and this is like the basic way you interacted with a computer, like the the the, uh, the basic way. <laughs> uh, the programming language was just set up like this uh, to interact with. Now, of course, this is not a real Commodore 64. I have a computer right here. I could be doing almost anything with. I've been learning JavaScript and everything the last few weeks, but I always remembered that this idea that this was a really good way to learn uh, to program. So I thought I'd try it. I got one of the mini consoles. It's a lovely little console. I'll put a picture up so you can see it. But um, really, this is what I wanted it for, being able to plug a keyboard in and do some BBC Basic. And they actually produce, uh, I don't own this, but they produce a full-size replica C64 too, where it has the original keyboard with all the original keys. Uh, but if you plug a keyboard into the C64 mini, you have to learn where some of the things are mapped. Uh, for example, um, the run stop buttons and things like that you have to figure out where they're mapped to on a standard keyboard but once you do you have a pretty functional commodore 64 emulator you can even if you are so inclined you can even whoop, no not that you can even have it uh all crt and give you the full like hideous scan line effect which i do sometimes like but i think uh for me i uh I want it classic style. I do like, though, that they give you European and North American CRT settings because, of course, uh, the Commodores and Amigas and stuff were so huge in uh, Europe, not just in the US. It's one of the few, I think, pieces of well-known international hardware where, like, there was a really big market outside the US kind of leading the way with it. So a lot of games, a lot of stuff, they were built for PAL mode, which is pretty rare. Uh, but this is what we're interested in. So I'm gonna uh, let me see. So shift home. There we go. <laughs> That's how you clear the screen. Uh, so what is this series? Um, this is not a tutorial series, mainly because I don't know basic. Um, <laughs> I know a little bit, but I'm still learning. But um, kind of it's like a video diary series. So I've had this in my hands about two weeks now. I haven't had a huge amount of time to play with it, but I've been playing with a lot of stuff. I've been learning a lot of. Uh, a lot of Commodore stuff. One of my favorite things, actually, is stuff from the manual still works. So it's kind of like a, how am I doing? How do I feel I'm learning? What can I show you? What can I do? Um, 
So I uh, I got the original <laughs> Commodore 64 user's guide. And the first thing it does is it tries to have you uh, print out some bars to, uh, to basically um, test out the colors. So there is a, if I press control one, this cursor is gonna change color for the text and then control nine. There we go, okay. That's the reverse. I promise I'm not a complete idiot. Here we go. So the first thing in the Commodore manual is like, hey, make these, uh, make these different colored bars. Uh, and here you can see basically the range, <laughs> the range of very attractive colors on the Commodore 64. This is why I will tell you why I was never hugely into uh, Commodore 64 games, I think, because this is like the, the <laughs> this is the colors you have available to you. So the first programs in the uh, in the manual have stuff like this, which are kind of like so basic. I remember this when I was a kid, line numbers. When I was a kid, I thought that the purpose of the line numbers was like some esoteric thing I didn't quite understand. Uh, but I discovered years later that like it is just line 10, line 20, and the reason you number it like that is if you forget something you want to put something in later, you can just number line 15 and slip it in. So this is famously like the first Commodore program for in all the manuals. Uh, 10 print hello, 20 go to 10, which creates a loop because it's just going to, every time it prints hello, it's then going to go to the next line. Famously does this. There we go. Might not look like much is happening, but uh, yeah. No, I mean, this is all pretty basic stuff. I've done stuff to this level before. Although I did notice there's some stuff you can kind of play around with. Like I was having a uh, quite a fun time <laughs> doing stuff like um, uh, these little things. If you let me see if I can get uh, some of these characters. Actually, we want to keep this as a kind of a. I find a different set of lines. So uh, on the Commodore, each character on the keyboard can also be kind of a uh, like a picture character. So you can curate these kind of alternate characters. So we can print uh, like this, but I'll uh, print. Hold on, we want to uh, insert some stuff. So I think immediately you do kind of get a feel for what people who uh, were programming this era do say, which is uh, right. Th this is what you would see when you first turned on the computer. And so you get a kind of, oh, there we go. It's a lovely wave pattern. Actually, it kind of looks like the curtain from Super Mario Brothers 3, right? With, uh, with relatively small amounts of typing, you can pretty quickly get uh, almost, I would say, animation. Now, uh, this is going to look wrong to begin with. Because what this, this is not going to break the uh, frames at the moment. But just to give you an idea. So if I run this now, what we're going to see is a long chain of these characters. Oh, not yet. I put my go-to in. Back to the beginning. Whee! Very exciting. But, of course, you can also clear the screen with characters. So, uh, if you press uh, Shift and Home, this happens, right? Or, I, I say Home, it's not Home. It might be Home on a Commodore keyboard, but on your plug-in keyboard, you can clear the screen. You can actually associate that to a character. So, if you type Print, and then that, that is me hitting the Home button there to get that little heart up. When I now print this, it's going to clear the screen because that's that character. You can associate every character on the keyboard to uh, character 2, which means if we take our basic program and then line 15, print that. That's going to clear the screen on line 15. And 25, print blurp, 35, And I'm talking like this is a tutorial, but I 
should remind you, I'm I am very much a beginner with this. This is just me talking about kind of the fun I had with it. But these are all kind of toys, really, almost these little programs. So let me just list this off. And okay, so now we have a screen clear between every character. So we got. Burp, 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 burp. Now if I run this, we should get a rudimentary animation, right? It's a, a box spinning because it's showing that sequence, which is pretty cool, I think. I, I quite like it. Um, it is, of course, really fast. Uh, and uh, it's also, <laughs> it's not much. When I first did this, I was like, I know how to slow this down. Like I went like proper animation in my head and I doubled all the lines. But of course, we're talking computer speeds, so it doesn't really improve things that much. Um, if you want to make it a more uh, animation animation, you actually have to put like delay increments in and things like that. But it works, right? And I, I kind of like that. And uh, the other thing you can do, which is great, uh, you plug a USB stick into the mini and you have a disk drive. Okay, so it's dollar sign eight. Hey, here we go. So now if I list this, hey, this is everything I've saved to a disk. What's bounce? Oh, it bounces. So if I want to load this, I can do load bounce. Eight. Run. What was bounce? Oh, this is me failing to make a bouncing ball animation. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to wrap up in a second here, but I'll show you basically some of the things that I've done. I haven't done a lot of original stuff yet, I can't lie. What is three? Oh, I know what that is. That's something else I'll show you that's a little bit interesting. So I'll tell you what I'm going to load. I'll load NumberWiz. Now, NumberWiz 2, this is a type-in game. And in this era, a lot of games, when you wanted to buy a game, you would type it in from a magazine. And this, I actually found there's a British publisher, publisher, publisher called Osborne. And they have uh, a load of old Commodore 64 books on their website. And I hand typed this in like people did in the olden days. I can't actually scroll up to begin with. So uh, this is the kind of stuff I'm not ready enough. Hold on. So I'm going to list uh, 10 to 170. So we can see the beginning of this. I'm not ready at the moment to write these things for myself. I'm not there yet. But uh, you do kind of get a feel for what this does. So this game prints this is the number wizard. Uh, Dim A10. Appears uh, in a lot of programs. Don't 100% know what it does yet. Let uh, T equal it. That's, uh, I believe it's declaring a variable. So T will mean something later on. Uh, this is a loop. Uh, and this is kind of interesting, this thing here, 70 print, character 147, this is also clearing the screen, that screen clear button is, I believe it is character 147, so you can actually just type it out like that if you learn them. So this, uh, to anybody who's done any programming, a lot of this will look familiar, I'm sure. Um, but when you actually run this, it carries on for about twice as long, you get a game, and the game looks like this. This is Number Wizard. Uh, now this game, very, very basic. Commodore basic, particularly on the Commodore 64, has no visual element. You can't program visuals in basic because uh, the head of Commodore, Jack Frommel, got a, a perpetual license from Microsoft. So he never wanted to pay for an update. <laughs> so, uh, but you can make games and this is a game. So this game is, you get eight turns, uh, a wizard rolls the dice. You have to make the combination of the two dice. So five and one, that's six. Uh, every time you use a number, they go. And your goal is to get rid of your numbers at the top. So these are your numbers, one through nine. Uh, you can choose any two numbers. You can have zero whenever you like. But you have to get rid of all your numbers before your turns are up. If he runs a double, you get an extra turn. So six, we want to get rid of many numbers as possible, but we want to keep some little numbers to make stuff out of. So right now I'm just going to use six. I'll redo from start. <laughs> okay, here we go. There's, there we go. My six is gone. Uh, the dice throw is two six. What are your numbers? So that's eight. So I could take an eight and get rid of it immediately, but I could also get rid of a few doubles. So I, this time I'll take seven. One. 
Beautiful. One and one. That's two. Really no other way of making that. Two and zero. Four and six. Ten. Uh, so. Mm. Ooh, see, I can't make this one. I, I can't make ten out of what I've got left, I don't think. No. So, uh, I have to have zero and zero this time. Two and two, four. Again, pretty easy one, but, uh, I only got rid of one number. Two and one, three. I don't think I'm going to make it. Ten again. Four and one, five. At least I can do that one. Eight and nine. So, uh, basically, I'm here now hoping... <laughs> hoping for a 17 in the next four turns. It's going to be exactly 17. Oh, hold on. I can, I can, I can get rid of that one. Oop, I can have zero and... Zero, zero. I am not very good at this game, by the way. 6 and 6, 12. No. Oh, I can get 8. I can't really get rid of 8. There we go. 6 and 1, 7. There we go. Oh, the dice is 4 and 4. Nope, I'm stuck. Oh, and, uh... Oh, because he rolled a double. I got an extra turn. But I still can't do it, so... 2, 2. Keeps rolling doubles now, leaving me in forever. Look at that. He's doubling me up. Ooh, nine. Oh my god, I'm actually gonna make it. I won. Uh, it is possible to lose that game. I've only won it twice. But, uh, yeah, that's that's all in this code. Uh, 38 lines, and that game works. Um, you can't really do anything too much more sophisticated than that. But, you know, I, I don't think it matters. Uh, I think there is a lot of fun to... Uh, just the playing around and then of course as you get further in it gets more into um, machine code because while you couldn't uh, while you <laughs> you couldn't um, put uh, uh, run visuals through basic you could through machine code so you have to fire up the machine code uh, I do want to show you just one other thing, though, which if you are a Commodore fan or if you're a fan of BASIC and you're looking for a machine to play with and you're on the fence about this, I do want to show you something else. Or if you just like this as a mini console, um, you can load extra discs onto this for all kinds of things that you might want. Uh, for example, uh, I tried Geos, which is a uh, like a graphical operating system for the Commodore 64. But the most interesting thing to me was actually this. Now, after the Commodore 64 came out, there was a machine called the Commodore 16 and the Commodore Plus 4. And these machines were less successful because they had, uh, they didn't have hardware sprite support. Because they didn't have hardware sprite support, that meant that their uh, game capabilities weren't fantastic. And that's a shame, right? Like, that's a pity. Uh, but I think something that they've kind of, has kind of been forgotten for the uh, Commodore is, I think the Commodore 16 and the Commodore Plus 4 is they had uh, basic 3.5 as opposed to basic 2.0. And that was better visually. But one of the things you could do with it is uh, graphical stuff. And it's not massively well known, although you can get it online, but there was actually a port of BASIC 3.5 to the Commodore 64, and you can run it on the C64 Mini, uh, which lets you do stuff like this in BASIC. Now, uh, this worked last time I tried it, but it is not always perfect porting uh, code from... I'm copying this right now. I'm not just typing this off in my head, I'm still learning, but I'm copying this right now straight off the, uh, the, um, uh, Commodore 16 manual. But the, the code mostly works. The only time it doesn't work is, uh, in basic through these commands called poke and peek. And what they do is they directly access the machine's memory and the Commodore 16 and the Commodore plus 4 don't have 
same memory. Now, most of this code is sort of, I won't say a mystery to me, but I'm not an expert in it. I couldn't have written this off the cuff. I would have to copy it from this magazine. Uh, but this is essentially like a, like a manual day one with your new Commodore piece of code and runs straight out of the Commodore 16 manual on this uh, C64 mini version of basic 3.5. Now you have to uh, download this. I found this online. It doesn't come with the mini. But uh, now I probably typed something wrong, but oh no, here we go. So the original Commodore 64 couldn't do this uh, with its version of BASIC built in. Uh, this is what I mean when I say uh, graphics control within BASIC. Uh, and this kind of stuff, I kind of grew up with computers that were doing this because it always made me so impressed. Uh, and you can do other things with it too. Now this is kind of slow. You know, a modern computer is going to draw this in a blink of an eye but you know it, it's it's there right you have it you have access to it uh straight away uh to draw with on the old commodore so i i mean i couldn't um i couldn't uh recommend the c64 mini solely on this because as i say this doesn't come with it you have to go online and find the old version of Commodore, uh, a Commodore Basic 3.5, but it works. This is actually, weirdly enough, this version of Commodore Basic was specifically designed so that you could write code that um, on a Commodore 64 that would be compatible with the new Commodore machines. But this version of it, uh, and there are similar Basic extensions. There's a famous one called Simon's Basic and um, all sorts. But this specific. Uh, version was actually just put out by a magazine. It was a Commodore magazine that just released this and let you sign off for it. I don't know who put it online or why, but uh, it's out there if you want it. Uh, I haven't delved too much into this because I've still been learning basic, basic. But yeah, I'm having a great time with it. So that's kind of the end of my little video diary for today. I mean, this is really just a guy learning basic for the first time. I think down the line I could see myself maybe picking up that full-size uh, Commodore to uh, C64 to uh, type on. Uh, you know, and by the way, this is not a real Commodore 64 under the hub. It's way more powerful than a Commodore 64. It's more like a Raspberry Pi type thing. But the simulation of the experience, I think, is genuinely useful. You know, it, it puts you in a place to be like... Uh, yeah, I want to sit and learn to code. Kind of love it. Uh, let's see if I've got nothing wrong with this one. Uh, here we go. You can do it with boxes, too. You ever, <laughs> you ever wanted to draw some boxes? Uh, yeah, there you go. Uh, it's kind of nice. And it's it's been a fun experience, because like I say, my dad used to program BASIC, and he was on an Acorn Archimedes, way more advanced than the computer this is pretending to be. But uh, I still miss that, the little drawing lines and the stuff being produced as you uh, as you see it coming through. So um, my plan is to stick with it and to keep hopefully learning. And uh, I'm not going to have a an update like this every day, but um, I'm hoping to make maybe a, a basic little game. There, there's a word again. A, a, a rudimentary little game in basic that is at least playable. Wouldn't be very fast. It would depend on what kind of game it was. Uh, and then maybe onto some machine code stuff, and, and we'll see. Um, and until next time, uh, if you enjoyed this and you want to see more, let me know. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.